Well, good morning, Bread of Life. It is good to be with you. I would say that uh, it is good to see familiar faces as well as some new faces. Uh, but as you know, we are uh, not uh, in a physical location, and this is coming to you online. Um, but I'm excited to be with you. Um, I want to thank uh, Pastor uh, Colette for giving me an opportunity to share with you about how the Lord has called uh, me and my wife, Angela, into missions, and about our ministry called The Worship Room. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Pastor Colette and the Bread of Life Missions Board uh, for taking us on uh, as uh, monthly uh, partners. Uh, your monthly gift is key to us uh, being in full-time ministry. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jonathan Bover, and my wife, Angela, and our three children, uh, James, Sadie, and baby Josiah, uh, we are a missionary family. And for the past three years, we've been serving uh, at the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, Missouri, um, where we've been part of leading daily prayer and worship meetings. If you don't know what IHOP KC is, uh, they are a missional organization uh, that for the past 21 years have been doing 24-7 prayer and worship. Um, I had the honor and privilege of serving as a uh, full-time musician there. And uh, our worship team took its place in the 24-hour uh, schedule. And so we did uh, six prayer meetings, uh, six two-hour prayer meetings a week, um, where we were part of ministering to thousands of people uh, every day, um, all over the earth, uh, you know, to the underground church that can't meet in a uh, physical location. They would watch the web stream. Uh, we'd minister to them. Uh, we would minister to um, houses of prayer that didn't have musicians or music or worship, and we would help them uh, be able to conduct uh, their prayer meetings and engage with the Lord and engage uh, in, in what they're praying for. Um, and then just thousands of people tuning into this web stream uh, that are being saved, healed, and delivered. Um, I would show you uh, a little bit about um, uh, I have KC, uh, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So if something pops up right now, great. If not, we're going to continue to to move on. But just to give you a little bit of context as what I'm talking about... Um, IHOP KC, when they started 24-7, uh, 21 years ago in May 1999, um, actually they started full-time 24-7 uh, in September, but they started 18 hours a day in May 1999, um, they did some research. And so they found out that in the earth there's about a thousand ministries or so that were doing 24-7 uh, prayer. Um, well... 21 years later uh, is absolutely exploded and now there's about 25 to 35,000 houses of prayer throughout the world that are doing 24-7 uh, prayer and worship. And that doesn't even include um, houses of prayer that uh, just do four, six hours a day. Um, and so uh, we were part of that reality um, the past uh, three and a half years. Um, and recently we moved back to Massachusetts um, where we are preparing to birth uh, a house of prayer that we're calling the Worship Room. Uh, TWR, House of Prayer for short, or TWR. Um, our heart is to birth a community where singers, musicians, and intercessors uh, gather together to minister to the Lord and ask him to release the fullness of God's power in this region. Um, the vision of our ministry is to um, invite the body of Christ um, to corporate intercession that uh, through that we'll engage in the Great Commission. And then weekly, uh, 
uh, our desire is to disciple people to live a lifestyle of prayer, fasting, and devotion. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick promotion, and then uh, I'll be sharing a little bit about our testimony and how the Lord called us into missions. In this next season, the Lord is inviting us to partner with Him in birthing a house of prayer in our home state of Massachusetts. We're calling it the Worship Room. This house of prayer will facilitate daily prayer meetings where singers, musicians, intercessors will be set apart to serve and minister to the Lord. It will also serve as a missional base where we will be praying for the Lord's will to be done in this region. Our job as missionaries is to raise up watchmen who will take their place on the wall as intercessors who will pray both day and night and not keep silent until heaven comes to earth. We will do this by combining both music with prayer to create a beautiful atmosphere in which we can wait on the Lord to release revelation. We see this house of prayer as a strategic ministry that engages in corporate prayer, focused on the missional aspects of the kingdom, like salvation, healing, proclaiming the gospel. One of our goals is to encourage and invite the body of Christ to the place of corporate prayer. The worship room will be a public ministry that will provide a place for local believers to come and be in God's presence and be strengthened by His Word. We are so excited to be serving God in this way, and I hope that you will join with us in this journey together. So that's a little bit about what we want to do in this area uh, as a ministry, and right now we're in the process of developing it, we're in the process of writing a nonprofit for it, and we're in the process of inviting people and equipping people to be part of the house of prayer. So I'll share with you a little bit about my testimony and how the Lord uh, called uh, me and my wife into missions. So back in 2011, um, uh, like I said, I'm uh, from Winchenden. I grew up in Cornerstone and I was part of leading worship, um, and I was driving in my car one day, and the Lord uh, spoke to me. And it was one of those moments that was very profound, um, a moment that uh, I'll never forget. And, you know, when the Lord speaks to us, you know, we need to take stock of that. We need to write it down because... Um, there's something about God leading us and, and looking back and, and saying, oh yeah, like the Lord spoke that and so many years later, that actually happened, that actually came to pass. But he spoke to me and he said, I'm calling you to full-time worship. And I was like, what is that? I've never heard of full-time worship. I know what full-time ministry is, it means that you know, I'm going to be a pastor. Or I'm going to have to go to Bible college. And uh, at the time, uh, I really didn't have any interest in that, nor did I want to do that. Um, so five years later, um, we found ourselves um, kind of at a crossroads in our lives where um, I was, you know, about 30 years old, and I realized that you know, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. Um, I was at a job that um, I felt like, you know, wasn't for me. The And so I, I had a plan of either going after music, which I loved because I was a, I was a worship leader, um, but I didn't have any formal training and I wanted to become a worship leader and that, that would be my full-time occupation. Um, or I was going to go into business for myself um, we had gone on this journey of getting out of debt and I was ready now to 
you know, build something from the ground up um, and kind of be my own boss. Um, and then uh, through the course of talking with our pastors and uh, getting counsel, um, you know, we had these two plans before the Lord. And so one Sunday, our pastor preached a message. He said, you know, when God calls you to something, there is no plan B. And when I heard that, I realized that, uh, oh my goodness, you know, the Lord is calling us uh, to look into going after music, uh, to be a worship leader. So, uh, 2016, uh, we moved out to Kansas City, Missouri to attend the International House of Prayer University, which is a ministry school that gives us hands-on training uh, to become, uh, you know, musicians, uh, and worship leaders uh, in the context of 24 uh, 7 prayer. And I had learned a little bit about the International House of Prayer. And when I saw they had the school, I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. Because um, I'd get a lot more time on an instrument than I would on, um, uh, in, a, in, a, you know, in a classroom. And I, again, I didn't want to be a Bible college student. So, uh, the fall of 2016, I begin uh, the training process. I begin school. And part of our curriculum was to uh, be in that prayer room 14 to 16 hours a week. And of course, as a, you know, a worship leader who, uh, and a musician who loves you know, good worship, I mean, this room was, uh, was the place to be. I mean, you could just feel God's presence. Uh, the worship leaders were anointed. Uh, the room was anointed. The music was anointed. People, you know, praying passionate prayers. It just really kind of like was like, oh man, this is so good. Um, and after being in that environment, you know, 14, 16 hours a week for a couple of weeks, all of a sudden I came in one day and I just remember, you know, thinking to myself, God, what, what am I doing here? Because part of being a student there that first semester is you're not allowed to serve anywhere. You're not allowed to um, you know, jump on one of the worship teams or do very much. And I, I had a mentality that like, you know, I'm here to serve, I'm here to do. And um, so, I, so I'm sitting in this room, I'm asking the Lord, you know, God, did you really call me out to the middle of the country just to sit in this room and do nothing? And the Lord said, yes. And I can remember in that moment, you know, my heart um, was feeling just like dull. And I was really struggling to do this life of prayer thing. You know, I, I didn't know what to study in, in my word. I didn't know what to pray. I felt like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I've got to, you know, I've got to get it. I've, I've got to press in and I've got to push through and I've got to. Uh, pray my heart out and, and, you know, eventually I'll grow in prayer. And, um, but I was like, I was just really struggling. And I remember the Lord touching me with his presence, this warm, tangible presence. And I just remember thinking to myself, God, what is this? Because I'm actually really struggling. I, I, I'm actually thinking that I'm not you know, not doing what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. I'm, I'm actually having trouble engaging in prayer. And actually, I'm finding it boring. I'm finding it hard to be inspired by your word. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, you know what? Just by being in this room where the worship never stops, uh, where my, my will is being prayed, uh, my word is being prayed on a microphone, you're actually in agreement with that, and you're actually uh, you're actually doing a life of prayer. The yes in your heart to be in here, it moves my heart, and I love you. And I was like, "That's this is crazy, Lord. I'm not doing anything. In fact, I'm I feel like I'm failing." And what was happening was is I had always based my relationship with the Lord. Um, on how I served him, the way, uh, the, the things that I did, 
uh, to uh, you know for him that I would receive his favor that I would um, feel his love through how well I did things and you know the assignments in our life are important uh, but God was was telling me those things don't matter I want to connect with you and I remember like the, I was just blown away by this. And what and what this experience did of the Lord just telling me he loves me and he enjoyed me, it gave me confidence that in my weakness and brokenness as a human, I could still move God's heart. And that gave me a freedom when I came into the house of prayer. When I came and sat down, and I felt like I didn't have to have my list. I felt like I didn't have to do all these things in prayer, but I could sit there and just know that he loved me and it really transformed something in my heart and all of a sudden I began to enjoy the encounter. I began to enjoy the Lord enjoying me. And there was a uh, there was a shift and uh, and, it, and it gave me freedom in my prayer life and all of a sudden I'm enjoying prayer. All of a sudden the word is coming to life. Uh, growing up in the church, I always viewed prayer as, you know, you get in a circle, you pray in tongues, you, uh, you know, shout out some anointed prayer, uh, which there's nothing wrong with that. But um, all of a sudden they're praying the word and there's, there's something about praying the word, singing the word that it's touching me and it's changing me from the inside. And again, I grew up in the church. I've been into many Holy Spirit fiery prayer meetings, but I just never thought about God enjoying me. And that's what really changed my life. So all that to say, after that first year, I walk into the prayer room one day and uh, all of a sudden the Lord brings me back to the word they spoke to me in 2011. He said, this is... This is the place of full-time worship. And light bulb goes off. Oh my goodness, Lord, you're calling me to be in the house of prayer. And right there and then I knew the Lord was, was inviting me into that. And then he dropped this question in my heart. He said, what would I do with believers in North Central Massachusetts if they would come and minister to me like this? four to six hours a day? What kind of things would I shift in the atmosphere if the body of Christ in that region were to minister to my heart and partner with me in intercession for my will being done on earth? And of course, I'm like, I don't know, Lord. But that sparked an invitation. And I knew that the Lord was giving uh, my wife and I an assignment um, to um, come back to this region and start a house of prayer. So we spent the next uh, three and a half uh, years uh, becoming missionaries, uh, finishing uh, my schooling and graduating, uh, raising up a partnership team that would help us be in full-time ministry. Um, and then just the, some of the relationships that we built there uh, really trained us and prepared us for the season that we're in now for such a time as this. And so uh, we're really excited about uh, getting ready to launch this house of prayer. Um, and we believe that it'll, uh, it'll impart the transformational work that God did in our hearts to others as well as strengthen the church in this region um, and be a missional organization that is praying and interceding day and night for uh, the things of God's kingdom um, in this area. So this morning, I want to share with you from the Word a message that I've entitled uh, the House of Prayer, God's Glorious Plan for Israel and the Church. 
So if you have your Bibles, open up to Isaiah 56, 7 through 8. And I'm going to read them. Uh, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation just because this is the Bible that I carry around with me. And uh, so it fits in my backpack and it's accessible. <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> excuse me, I will bring them to my holy mountain of Jerusalem and fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. For the sovereign Lord who brings back the outcast of Israel says, I will bring others too besides my people Israel. So to give you some context for Isaiah 56, 7 through 8, Isaiah has been prophesying about Jesus' first coming as the promised Messiah. But it also gives us insight to Jesus' second coming. Uh, chapter 56, uh, along with previous chapters, tells us of God's plan to uh, redeem Israel and the nations, which the nations are anyone that commit themselves to the Lord's ways. So when Isaiah says, my house of prayer shall be, shall be called a house, um, excuse me, when Isaiah says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, uh, this is a glorious uh, reality because it assumes that the nations will be discipled and understand that God's house is a house of prayer. Uh, this indicates, along with many other scriptures, uh, in the Bible, that there will be a global ministry of prayer and intercession that happens in an increased way around the time Jesus would return. Uh, and to, to know that, we can look at Isaiah 62, 6 to 7, um, as well as Isaiah uh, 52, uh, 6, as well as verses 8 and 9. Um, in fact, I'll read uh, Isaiah 52, 6. In fact, I'll read verses uh, 7 through 8. Uh, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messengers who bring good news, the good news of peace and salvation, the news that the God of Israel reigns. The watchmen shout and sing with joy before their very eyes they see the Lord returning to Jerusalem. And so we can see that uh, these messengers are intercessors and singers uh, and musicians. And as they're worshiping uh, the Lord, they actually... Uh, they're actually doing a couple of things. Number one, they're proclaiming salvation. They're discipling the nations. Um, they're, in, they're engaging with God's heart and connecting with him. And as they're in this uh, interaction, they're actually seeing the Lord return. Um, and if we look at Isaiah 56, it talks about how the Lord is inviting his people, and others from all over the earth to come and worship in the house of prayer where God's desire is to fill them with joy. The title or the phrase uh, house of prayer is a prophetic promise that the Lord wants to release in the earth today where prayer and worship would be established day and night just like as it is in heaven right now around the throne. Uh, we can see that in Revelation 4 and 5. Uh, the house of prayer is a place of an encounter, fascination, and beauty where our hearts grow in intimacy for Jesus. I mean, that's what happened to me when I was in there. No one prayed for me. No one touched me. But the Lord 
uh, begin to encounter me and I begin to become fascinated with this, uh, this understanding that God desired me and it really changed something inside me. Um, in Isaiah 52, 6, it says, But I will reveal my name to my people, and they will come to know its power. The watchmen shout uh, and sing for joy before their very eyes. They see the Lord returning to Jerusalem. Let the ruins of Jerusalem break into joyful song. The Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed uh, Jerusalem. Uh, the Lord is going to use the house of prayer in this context for uh, redeeming Jerusalem and discipling the nations. In fact, um, Isaiah 62, 6-7 gives us the mandate to conduct day and night prayer. It says, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent. And give him no rest till he establishes and till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Now there's a, a crazy phrase to make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. I mean, think about that. Think about that in the context of our day that we're living in now. How in the world is Jerusalem going to become a praise in the earth? Right now it's more of a uh, a curse word or a uh, uh, most of the nations hate Israel but he's calling people to do day and night prayer until Jerusalem becomes a praise in the earth something is going to happen that is going to cause that reality uh, to come to pass uh, just for a second imagine with me uh, in the earth there are millions of singers musicians intercessors engaging and singing uh, and praying the Bible day and night with joyful music. Think about the impact that that'll have on our hearts and on God's heart. Just think about the whole earth crying out in intercession and ministering to the Lord uh, makes me really excited and gives me hope for the days ahead. Uh, it says in Isaiah 6, 3, that the whole uh, earth is full of his glory. The house of prayer not only touches our hearts, but it also evangelizes disciples and fuels missions. You know, today there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in our earth and in our country, in our nation with lockdowns and... Uh, you know, pandemic and being forced to wear masks, and there's a lot of like controversy and all that, and a lot of a lot of uh, people are like, oh man, this is so hard, and I'm walking through this this difficult time, and uh, and we go, you know, where where are we going, you know, like what's next, you know, and and there's this this spirit of grumbling and complaining um, and there's also the spirit of discouragement and depression but think about the reality of what God is going to do he's going to get the whole uh, the whole earth to sing the whole earth will be discipled to worship the whole earth is full of his glory when we fix our eyes on that it changes in our heart we no longer think about, um, uh, you know, leadership that's flawed. We no longer think about how our lives are affected by a pandemic. Uh, we have hope. We're, we're joyful. God wants to make us joyful uh, through his house of prayer uh, and, uh, and through... Uh, this prayer movement uh, at the end of the age, in the last days. Um, to kind of show you what I'm talking about, uh, I'm going to show you a clip now that's about five to six minutes long. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It was my last set at IHOPKC, 
And during the set, we were praying for Israel. And so I hope you enjoy this. congregation would begin to experience more of your spirit. God, we pray that the next time they gather, they would experience more of the Holy Spirit. They would experience greater dimensions of his power. They'd be immersed into greater experiences of his love. And they would be sent out greater boldness unction and authority to speak about your son. God, we ask for the large congregations in the land. We ask for the small congregations and everything in between. We ask for home groups and believing families. God, we ask every time your people gather, would you release an increase? Would you release more? Would you empower them to proclaim your word with greater dimensions of boldness? Father, we ask, fill them with the Holy Spirit in a fresh way. Fill their congregations and their gatherings together with a greater experience of your presence in Jesus' name. Well, 
I hope you got a picture or a glimpse of what the house of prayer is through that uh, clip. And, uh, you know, while we're trying to establish a house of prayer here, you know, it's, it won't be as, as well produced as that, but that's the idea of what we are uh, trying to birth in North Central Massachusetts. Um, but I want to get back to um, this uh, house of prayer theme that we see, um, this prophetic promise that uh, we, we see in the Bible about the house of prayer. And in Matthew 21, Jesus himself gives us an example of what would happen when his house of prayer becomes that priestly ministry of worship and intercession. Let's read verses uh, uh, 12 to 14, Matthew 21, 12 to 14. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna, son of David, they were uh, indignant and said to him, do you hear what these uh, children are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you ever read out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants your uh, praise has been perfected. And in this passage, uh, Jesus confronts the religious spirit of the day and calls it back to the place of prayer. I believe that this was a prophetic sign of Isaiah 56, uh, 7, not only uh, then, but also now for such a time as this. Uh, that day, Jesus shook the temple by overturning tables and dismissing the vendors who were buying and selling. selling, He quickly turned back, he quickly turned it back into the place of worship and prayer. When Jesus did this, healing was restored and miracles happened. It says that the children started crying out, Hosanna, son of David. In fact, it was a song because it's a direct quote from Psalms 118. And that phrase, Hosanna, Son of David, was considered to be a highest form of praise. Think of the implications of this and, and how this relates to our day. With God shaking our nations I believe that this is an hour that God is calling his church to rise up and become a house of prayer. To become a kingdom of priests. You know, this is the calling that the Lord uh, has given me and my wife. Uh, we want to establish a house of prayer, like we've said. But, you know, we can't do this alone. We need help. Uh, we are in need of the body of Christ to come around us uh, and, and so that we can, we can do this work. Um, whether, uh, whether it's a being a prayer partner or a financial partner, or someone who feels called to serve in the house of prayer, uh, we desire to do this together. Uh, that as we set up day and night prayer in this region, it will produce a harvest of little children crying out, Hosanna, Son of David, which is a highest form of praise. As I close today, I want to lead us in a time of prayer together. Um, if you have your, your Bibles, um, 
Open up to Ephesians 3, 14 to 19. And join me in praying for the church and uh, for our hearts um, as we uh, as we go today. Um, you know, I didn't just want to come and, and give you a message and share about, but I want I wanted to uh, be that missionary that begins this work by inviting the church to pray. And so, um, just pray with me. So I'm going to be praying for the church out of Ephesians 3, 14 to 19. For this very reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory and be strengthened with his might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So Lord, here we are. Your church, God, we stand up and with one voice and one mind and we cry out and we ask you, Lord, would you grant us according to the riches of your glory, God, to be strengthened with might. God, strengthen your church today. Lord, we're, we're praying over all, uh, all the congregations and all the body of Christ, God, that is in North Central Massachusetts. And we're asking you, Lord, grant them God, to be strengthened, God, by your glory. Lord, let them be a burning and shining light today. God, I'm asking for every pastor, every leader, God, who is uh, feeling uh, the, the hardship, God, of what the church is going through right now, who is feeling the, um, the weight, God, of of having to be a leader in this time and the and the the quickness of having to change things and 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 deal with so many hard things god i'm asking that you would strengthen them right now lord god strengthen them on their inner man that christ may dwell in their hearts god increase their faith god increase their love for you god let them be rooted and grounded Lord, in that love, let your church be a burning and shining light in this hour that is filled with hope. God, give them a hope. Let them know the hope of their calling. Give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord. Lord, I'm asking for our hearts, God. Lord, strengthen us. Lord, strengthen us. Like Isaiah 52, wake up, wake up, O Zion, clothe yourself with strength, put on beautiful clothes, O holy city of Jerusalem. God, clothe us with strength today, God. Lord, let us feel your love, God, regardless of, of what we might think, of whether you're mad at us or upset with us, God. That, that's not true, God. Let us feel your love. It is so vital, God, that we would uh, know that we move your heart even in our weakness and brokenness. God, you enjoy the relationship with us, God. Lord, let our hearts be able to comprehend with all the saints, God, the width, the depth, the length of your love. God, give us a fresh revelation of your desire for us. God, you desire us this morning. Lord, come and fill us with the fullness of God. Lord, fill us with the fullness, God. Let us experience and touch the fullness. Lord, that we would be satisfied in you. That we would be fascinated on you. That we would feast on your beauty. 
God, that our own hearts would burn for you. Lord, I thank you for the church. I thank you for anyone that's watching us this morning. I thank you for them. Touch them, Lord. In your mighty name we pray this morning. Amen. Thank you so much for letting me uh, share with you this morning. Um, If you'd like to uh, know more about what we're doing in the area, if you'd like to know how you can get involved, um, I'm going to put up some information um, as well as uh, some other things so that you can uh, join us. All right. Uh, Bless you guys. Um, Have a blessed day. Amen.